Hey everybody, Johnny here. If there's one thing I'm a sucker for, it's hexagons. It must be because I'm such a fan of science fiction or something, but I just can't get enough of them. Quite a while ago I did a video about tessellating patterns, and I wanted to revisit that idea and make an even more procedural grid of hexagons. Once I got into it, I found it got a lot more complicated than I was expecting. I'm going to show you the path I took through this, and maybe give you some ideas about how you can do projects in geometry nodes in the future as well. Starting with a new geometry node tree, I'm going to add a curved primitive circle, and then I'm immediately going to group it. I'm going to cut all the links, and I'm going to start from here. This way, everything I do will be contained within this node group. I'll go ahead and plug it into the output, and we're ready to go. Since I'm making hexagons, let's take the resolution down to 6. Now in my old video, I used an actual grid mesh to put my hexagons on. But since that video came out, we got the mesh grid primitive. So we're going to use that instead. I want a hexagon to show up on every point of this grid. So to do that, I'm going to use an instance on points node. And plug in my hexagon as my instance. These are currently too big, so I'm going to shrink them down a bit. Some things that I'm going to want in my final node group are the number of rows and columns, and the radius of my hexagons. So let's go ahead and drag those to my group input. Vertices X, which come along this way, will become my columns. Vertices Y will become my rows. When I created this node group, I had already gotten an entry for radius, so I'll go ahead and plug that into my hexagon radius. Keeping our nodes well named can also help out in the future. So let's change curve circle to something better. With this selected, I'll press F2, and name this hexagon. Now I know that this node is generating my hexagon. Coming over to my side panel, I'm gonna get rid of the resolution socket and move the radius down. I'm gonna hit tab to go out of my node and reduce the radius. Now we could drag the size X and Y to our input and then calculate those by hand every time we wanna use this node, but that's not why I'm doing this. So we're gonna to have to calculate our size X and Y. And with our radius and a little math, we should be able to do that. So for our simple hexagon, we have our radius. And here, we have our minimal radius. The minimal radius is also known as an apothem, so we'll label this A. Generally speaking, if you go to the Wikipedia page for a shape like a hexagon, you're going to find the formulas for things like the A value based on the R value. In this case, we find out that A is equal to the cosine 30 times R. It goes a little something like this. Since a hexagon is actually six equilateral triangles, this red line is also the same distance of R, and each side is also the length of R. So this little segment here is actually R over 2. Again, since this is an equilateral triangle, each one of these angles is 60, and so that means this angle is 30. So since the cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, we can rearrange that formula to A equals cosine 30 R. Now, I'm gonna squeeze my grid down just a little bit, and we can see that from center point to center point of each hexagon is 2A, and that the total distance from the center point to the center point, which will be the points of our grid, is the number of rows minus one times 2A. So we'll take the green line once to there, and twice to there. And that gets us from the bottom to the third hexagon. So let's go ahead and implement what we've got now in our geometry nodes. The first thing we want to calculate is this A value. So let's go ahead and add cosine 30. If I add a math node, I'll add a math node and choose cosine. Please note that the value of the trigonometric nodes are in radians, not in degrees. And this 30 here is 30 degrees. You can calculate 30 degrees in radians by hand, or if you duplicate this node and change the mode to two radians, it converts from degrees to radians. So here I'll enter 30 degrees and plug that into this. So now I've plugged in 30 degrees to radians into my cosine. Next, I wanna multiply that by R. So I'll put my mode to multiply, bring my radius, bring my cosine 30. So the output of this multiply is my A value. I'm going to go ahead and grab these three nodes and group them together. The input was the radius. I'll connect up my output and I'll call that A. 
and then I'll tab out of this node. In addition, I'm gonna change the name of this node to A. So now we have our A variable calculated and hidden behind this node. As long as we feed it the radius, it's gonna give us the right value. The next thing we needed was the distance from here to here. That was two times A. So we'll add a math, multiply node, plug in our A, and change the bottom to two. So now this represents the green line here. Clicking on this node and hitting F2, I'm gonna call this 2A. And now to get the overall height, I wanna multiply 2A by the rows minus one. So if I duplicate this node, set it to subtract, bring in my Y value, which is my rows, and subtract one. I'll name this rows minus one. I'll add a math node, set it to multiply, and put these two here. And this should be my size Y. If I tab out of my node and change my radius, my X size should stay the same, but my Y size should now change accordingly. Which it does. I'm gonna group these three nodes together, but leave the A out of it so that I can reuse that again later. And I'll name this one Y size. The next thing we need to worry about is moving every alternating row up before we squish them together left to right. If you've watched my video on using row and column selections, this next part will be familiar. If I take the output of my grid node and add in a geometry set position node, I can change the Y offset, but that changes all of the hexagons at the same time. I want to select just the second row. To, use, to do that, I'm going to use the indices of the points of the grid node and do some math on them to get a selection. I'll do input index, then utility math, and divide my index by the number of rows. Next, I'll round this number down. These two nodes have this effect. The points in the first column go 0, 1, 2. Since I have three rows, this number, they become 0, 0.333, and 0.666. When I do a floor operation on all of those, they all become 0. The next column becomes 1, 1.3333, 1 1.6666 and when I floor them, they all become one. And that continues on for each row. If I take that output and use the modulo operator with a value of two, for all of my even columns, all of the indices will change to zero. And for all of my odd columns, all of the indices will be one. And that's the selection I'm looking for. So I'll plug that into selection here. And now when I change the Y, you notice that only the odd number column moves. If you want a much more in-depth explanation of how that works, make sure to check out my video. For now though, I'm gonna go ahead and group these together and call that my column selection. We wanna offset, we wanna offset the odd rows up the value of A. So we'll add a vector, combine X, Y, Z, and put the A value in the Y socket, and then plug that into the offset. That looks good. So now let's get our X size. If I go ahead and shrink this, let's take a look at what we've got. First off, we have our radius in this direction and also in this direction. So the distance from the center point of this hexagon to this hexagon isn't immediately clear. However, we can deduce it pretty quickly. We know that this blue line is the value of R and we know that the bottom edge of this hexagon is also R. And if we cut this from the center point, that means that this is one half of R. It also means that this is one half of R. And because this is one half of R, that means that this is also one half of R. So the distance in the x-axis from the center point of this hexagon to this one is three halves R, because we have a half, a half, and a half times R. And then the same way that it was with the Y size, the entire Y size is the distance between two centers times the number of columns minus one. Let's jump into our nodes and do that. Let's take our R value and multiply it by three halves. I'll do a math node, multiply, connect it to R, and multiply it by 1.5, which is three halves. Then I need the number of columns minus one. So I'll do subtract one and take my X vertices, which is my columns, and plug it in here. I'll take these two values and multiply them together. And then I'll plug this into my X size. 
As you can see, that tightened up the spacing on my hexagons. There's now no longer any gap whatsoever. If I tab out of this node now and change my X and Y vertices, or change my radius, you see that it stays together perfectly. I'll go ahead and group these three together and call this the X size. Now there is one more feature that I'd like to add to this, and that's the ability to add a resizable gap between all of my hexagons. I'll need a float input for my gap, so I'll go ahead and add one here. I'll tab out and set this to 0.1. Now, if we think about the gap in our Y direction, all we're really doing is leaving the hexagons the same size, but increasing the overall Y size. Since the distance between hexagons was 2A, we can just add the gap in with the 2A before multiplying. So if we go into our Y size node, we'll add an input for gap. We'll plug gap into it, and then go back in. Here we had our 2A. We'll add a math node, And so now we have 2a plus gap. And immediately you can see that we've got a nice gap in the y direction. We'll tab out and we'll go to our x size. We'll add in an input for the gap and we're gonna add that to where we multiplied three halves times r. While I'm in this node, I'm also gonna clean up these input names. This top one was the radius and this middle one was the columns. And now I'll plug my gap into my X size node. We're almost to where we need to be, except let's take a closer look in here. Now that we've added a gap, our odd columns are no longer going up high enough. The center line is still even with the top of the preceding hexagon, instead of between the two hexagons. All that means is we need to raise them up half the distance of the gap so that they even up to here. To do that, I'll add a math node and set it to divide by two and bring in the gap. Then I'll add another math node, add it to the A value and half the gap. And now this is aligned in the center here. I'm gonna grab these three bottom nodes and group them together and call them the odd column offset. Now I'm just gonna do a little bit of cleanup. All right. Back out on our top level, we now have full control to add rows and columns, change our radius, and change our gap. One thing to note is because we used an instance on points, each one of these is a separate hexagon curve instance. This isn't one giant curve. If that's what you're expecting to come out of your node group, you could add an instances, realize instances node. And now this will be one giant combined curve rather than instances. Now I'll just add a curve line, curve to mesh, and plug these in. And there we go. This one got a lot more complicated than I was expecting. I hope you learned something along the way, and I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. So until next time, I'll catch you later.